Welcome to BB's Stage Door Canteen. This program is brought to you by the Bob and Dolores Hope Foundation. All right, welcome everyone. My name is Ricky and today we're going to talk about acting. So the first thing any good actor does before they start working on their scenes or their dialogue is warm up. And it's really important to warm up all parts of your body and make sure that you are ready to go. And the first thing we're going to do is warm up our face. And it's really important to have our facial muscles ready to go because a lot of acting and a lot of emotion comes through your face. And so the first thing we're going to do is do an activity that I call lion and mouse. And this is really going to get your facial muscles working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my face, right? I'm going to expand my muscles and make like a lion's face like this. Right, and you want to make your face as big as you can. Open your mouth, you know, really make, expand all your muscles and stretch your face, right? And then what you're going to do is take your muscles and basically crunch it all together, right, like a mouse, like this. Right? And you're going to do that back and forth a couple of times. And this is really going to get your facial muscles warmed up. So I'm going to do it a few times uh, back to back right now. Right, then you can massage your face a little bit and you should be ready to go with your face. Then you want to warm up your neck, right? You want to make sure your neck is moving and everything's going. So you're going to roll your neck around a little bit and make sure you do both directions, right? And you want to kind of stretch your arms, stretch your legs. You can do any kinds of physical stretches that you need, whether it be like lunges or stretching your arms or your shoulders, right? And the last thing I always do when I warm up, uh, whenever I'm directing something, we do this at theater camp all the time, as we do it's called a shakedown. And I'm not going to do the whole thing for you today, but I'm going to tell you how you can do it at home. And it's really easy and it's a lot of fun and everyone gets really into it. And what you do is you just shake different parts of your body and you just go around and kind of get you loose and ready to go. And so what you do is you take your arm and you just go 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then you do your left arm, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Your right leg, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And your left leg, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then you do the same thing, but seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you do it, keep repeating that until you get to one. And you do one shake for each limb, and then you're, you've shaked down and you're ready to go. Right? So those are our physical warm ups. The next thing we're going to do are some enunciation warm ups. And as an actor, it's really good to have great diction, right? Great enunciation. Because in any kind of space where you're performing, it's usually a pretty big space. And you want the people in the last row to be able to understand you as well as the people that are sitting in the first row or the people, your fellow actors, who are on stage with you. And my favorite thing to do for these warm, for these warm ups are tongue twisters, right? And I'm sure you know a bunch of different tongue twisters. Here are a few of my favorites. The first one that I always do is called Unique New York, and it goes like this. You know New York, you need New York. You know you need Unique New York. All right, I'm going to say it one more time. You know New York, you need New York. You know you need Unique New York. And you can go faster if you want, but the main thing is you want to enunciate every single letter. And the most important thing for these are the consonants at the end of the word. Right? So the D's and the K's, right? Those things, those letters are going to really help the audience understand what you are saying. Another tongue twister I like is called red leather, yellow leather. And it goes like this. Red leather, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. Red leather, yellow leather, good blood, bad blood. And it's got a lot of TH sounds and a lot of hard B and D sounds. And that's going to also help you with your enunciation of consonants. And another one that I do is called Irish wristwatch. And it's only two words, but it's pretty complicated, right? Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Right? You have to move your mouth different ways. And you want to move your mouth, and that's also going to help you warm up your different muscles that you need to say and enunciate all of the words you, need to, you do. All right? And um, the no last one I'm going to do is he threw three free throws. He threw three free throws throws. Right? It's going to give those F's and the TH sounds. It's going to help you enunciate those. And those are your diction exercises, the, the diction exercises that I always do with actors. The last group of warm-ups that I do are called projection warm-ups. 
right? Projection. What's projection? Projection is making sure that you are able to be heard in a big space, right? And this does not mean yelling. You don't have to yell to be heard. Yelling is not required. You can speak loudly and you have the ability to speak loudly without yelling. And that is called projection, right? And so the different exercises I do for this, there's two main ones. The first one I just call ha. And you kind of put your hands on right below kind of your stomach, right, right on your abdomen. And you just push and you go, ha, 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 ha. And you're going to push and you're going to see your, you're going to feel your diaphragm move because it's pushing the air out of your lungs, right? And in order to really project, you need to push that air out of your lungs so you can be heard by the people in the last row of the theater, right? And so you do that a few times, ha, 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 and practice really pushing that air out of your lungs, right? Now, in these times, you don't want to be going around to everyone just going, ha, 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 in public, right? So make sure you're alone in a safe distance from everyone when you're doing these activities. The last one that I do in terms of projection warm-ups is called a siren. And a siren means that you're just going to make your voice sound like a police siren, right? So you'll start low. Right? And by doing this, you both both work on the different tones that you have in your voice, but also you can use the air, right? You want to take a deep breath and use the air to take the whole siren, right? You shouldn't be breathing in the middle of the siren. You should have enough air, right? You should be holding enough air in your lungs to do the whole siren, right? All the way up and all the way down. All right, those are, those are my warm-ups. Um, now we're gonna talk about theater games. So everyone who's been to theater camp before here at the World War II Museum knows that we love to play theater games. And I'm going to talk about two of our favorite theater games, for our favorite theater games from theater camp today. And the first is called Bus Stop. And so here I have two chairs, right? This is a common game. It's also called Park Bench by some people. And so what you do is you need two people. So you need to find maybe a family member, someone who lives with you, to play this game with you, right? And so one person is going to sit at the chair. And they're just going to be the person just sitting neutrally at a bus stop, right? Just minding their own business. You can be reading a newspaper, doing whatever but you're going to be neutral. You're not going to have any emotion. You're just going to be there. And then the person sitting here, then you have someone else who's going to walk up, right? Someone else will be here and then walk up. And their goal, the person walking up, their goal is to make the person sitting on the bus stop to either laugh or to be so awkward that they want to leave, right? And so you can all do all different kinds of things, right? You can get close. You can tell jokes. You can make weird voices right? But your goal is to get them to break, right? To either feel so awkward or to laugh so hard that they just can't sit there anymore. Now, the one important rule for this game is that you can't ever touch them, right? This has to be things that you think of from your kind of acting repertoire, right? You can create a character, you can use different voices, you can tell a joke, you can tell a story, right? Anything you use, but you just can't physically touch them. That's to work on creating a character and work on improvisation. The last theater game that we like to play is called Count to 20. And it's very simple, but it's also kind of tricky. So what you can do, you can do this with your family, you need a couple people to do this, but you can gather people around, you say, all right, we're gonna count to 20. And so you start counting. There's no order. You never agree upon who starts and who finishes or what turn you take, right? You just have to count to 20. And if any, pre and if any two people say the same number, then you have to start over again. And it's much trickier than it sounds, but it helps you develop uh, kind of a, a teamwork, um, a teamwork, uh, um, uh, kind of teamwork mentality, and it really helps you kind of grow as an actor and work on being able to read your fellow actors and figure out uh, where they are in a scene and how to best help them on stage and work together on stage. And so those are two fun theater games. We have Bus Stop and Count to 20. And now we're going to talk about delivery, right? The last kind of part of acting is actually saying lines, right? Because as actors, we all want to have times on stage where we are featured, right? We have lines. We get to you know, kind of take our, our chance in the spotlight and, and perform on stage. And so there's two things we're going to, uh, I'm going to kind of go through real quick. The first is a joke. And the most important thing about comedy, about any kind of joke, is timing, right? And so I'm going to tell a Bob Hope joke. Um, and it, the text is this. The text, he says, I've been at NBC so long, I was at NBC when the peacock was an egg. That doesn't sound funny, right? I just recited a line. That's not funny. 
In order to make it a joke, you have to insert timing. In comedy, the rests, the pauses, are just as important as the moments when you are actually speaking. So if I tell the joke again, I'm gonna pause and use timing to make it sound more like a joke, like this. You know, I've been at NBC so long. I've been at NBC so long that I was here when the peacock was an egg, right? And that gives it more of a cadence of a joke. It will encourage your audience to laugh and to understand that it is a joke. And so whenever you tell a joke, whenever you have a comedy piece that you're gonna perform, you wanna make sure you have the timing laid out. The last thing I'm gonna perform for you all today is a monologue. And this is a monologue that was in our theater camp show last year. It's actual text uh, from a performance that Bob Hope gave um, at a war bond drive, a war bond show that he had on VE Day, on Victory in Europe Day in 1945. And so this is a short little monologue. I'm gonna kind of um, perform it for you now. And notice I have the, the text in front of me. And it's also, to remember, also good to remember that these are skills that you can use even when you're doing things like giving a speech, right? Projection and diction and enunciation, right? And all of these things and eye contact, they're helpful even when you're giving a speech. So they are transferable skills, right? It's not just for when you're on stage, it's for when you're doing anything where you're doing some kind of performance of text, all right? And so let me, let me perform this for you all. I'd like to stop the show for a minute and explain exactly why we're here. We want you to buy extra war bonds. That's the deadly serious purpose behind all of the fun these stars are having today. All these stars could tell you some fantastic stories about the war that we're in. Stories about the horror and the suffering and the bombing and the magnificence of all those fighting guys from Keokuk to Seattle and all points East, West, North, and South. And you know, when you talk about those guys with the guns, those guys doing the fighting and the falling and the dying, you don't mention war bonds. You don't have to, because they're buying them too with all of their monthly pay. We folks on the home front are buying bonds, but we have to buy more and more and more to make victory complete. And you see in that, uh, in, this, in this monologue, that I've kind of taken the text and I've also gone and marked this up. I've put punctuation in and marked where I'm gonna change my tone, take a pause, and you use the punctuation, and you use different markings to help you work with the text in order to perform it perfectly. So I hope these tips are helpful. I hope they're helpful uh, when you practice your own acting and your own performance. Um, and so good luck out there. Break a leg. <laughs>